Hello, Itsy Bitsy family. Art brings life to any room, especially a mini room. So let's jazz it up a bit with some tiny artwork for your next project. I've used my Cricut Maker, but you can also create most of these art pieces without a Cricut. Start by locating your clock image of choice from Google Images. I'm going to cut the clock face from black gloss vinyl with gold metallic cardstock underneath. Upload your clock face into Cricut Design Space by clicking Upload, locating your image. We need to remove all the white space so the Cricut will cut through these areas. To do this, click the magic wand tool at the bottom and start clicking over the white areas. You'll notice when I do that, you can start to see the lines come up on the preview on the right hand side. You can even do this to the wording part underneath. Once done, click Next. Select Cut Image because we're cutting out the clock from vinyl. Click your chosen image and insert it into your canvas. Then resize it down to your preferred miniature size. Now we need to make the wood backing for the clock. So click on shapes, select a circle, and then drag the circle to the size of your clock. That's perfect. I'm going to use balsa wood for the back of the clock. So I've changed the circle color to brown so that the Cricut knows to put it on a separate mat. Create a circle in the gold metallic cardstock that will sit between the black vinyl and the wood. To do this, we duplicate the circle and color it yellow. Not only does it help you identify your various pieces, but it also ensures the Cricut places all of your items onto separate mats. When I click make it, you'll notice that the bass wood features are greyed out. This happens because the iPad connects to the Cricut via Bluetooth. The Cricut wood cutting feature is lengthy and it needs a stable, uninterrupted connection. So in order to cut wood with your Cricut, you'll need to switch over to a PC or Mac version of Cricut Design Space. I'm selecting bass wood, 1.6 millimeter width, now, since I'm using balsa wood, it's very fibrous and flexible and it doesn't need as many cut passes as the Cricut suggests for this wood type. I found three passes was enough to cut all the way through, but yours will vary depending on the wood you're using. The Cricut will cut everything out. Now for the assembly. Here we have the gold cardstock and I'm going to stick the vinyl onto the cardstock. Then I wanted the wood piece at the back to be black. I used a black marker instead of paint so that the wood grain would also show through. Stick the clock face to the wooden backing and we have a completed clock in 1 12th and 1 6th scale. 
Start by typing in the colour or description of the art you're looking for into Google Images. I've gone with this line portrait and a deer print to contrast with the gold frames. Upload your artwork into the Cricut Design Space and select Print and Cut this time so your Cricut will print the image first and then cut it out. Resize it to your preferred size. Then we're going to make the gold frame by clicking on Shapes and selecting Square. Resize your square to fit the artwork by unlocking the padlock and dragging the green arrows in the bottom right hand corner. Once you've got the right shape, lock it in place. Duplicate that rectangle and drag it just off center so you have a line poking through at the top and on the left hand side like this. Then resize the second rectangle so it fits snugly inside. Select both rectangles and click slice. The slice function will cut the smaller rectangle through the bigger one, leaving us a frame size that fits the size of our deer art. Then duplicate that frame two times for the layers of gold cardstock we're going to use. Now we're going to make some glass for our frames. I've used a piece of laminator film, but you could use any clear film really. So to make your glass, create another square, but we're going to color it light gray so that we can identify it as the glass film. Drag it over to fit the size of your frame. Here are the mats. Send the white one to the printer. It will print a black box around the printout, which the Cricut uses to identify the correct cut locations. Send your mats through the Cricut to prepare for assembly. So here's the glass, the art, and our gold frame. Glue the piece of glass between two of the frame cardstocks with the gold facing outwards. Then glue your picture onto the cardstock with the art facing towards the glass piece. And that's it. You can see the depth between the glass and the art underneath, which makes it look pretty realistic. Our next art piece is a wooden panel photograph where the photograph is pasted directly onto wood. Upload your chosen image as a print and cut, just like we've done in the gold frame tutorial. Insert it onto your canvas and resize it to your perfect mini dimensions. Then duplicate the image and over in edit, click print and change it to no fill, which will turn that second shape into a cut. This will be the wooden piece that we cut out. Just like the clock, I've colored the wood with a black marker because I wanted to keep the wood grain. You could also paint it, stain it, or leave it with the original wood color. Poster hangers are a relatively new way to present art in the home. They have four wooden strips with magnets that hold the poster in place. We're going to use real magnets for this mini version in 1 12th and 1 6th scale. I used the draw function on the Cricut and then colored the designs in by hand. First, I located two draw images from the Cricut image database and inserted them onto my canvas. When searching for images to draw, you can select the draw function from the filter here. To create the shape of the A3 poster, I added a square and then resized it to cover the images. To check the right placement, send your rectangle to the back by clicking Edit, Arrange and then Send to Back, which will place the square behind the drawing. A 
Attach the rectangle and the drawing together by highlighting both objects and clicking attach. This tells the Cricut that both objects are joined. I did the same for the hexagonal artwork. For accurately measuring A3 in 1 12th and 1 6th scale, I searched for the original dimensions of an A3 paper. Then using scale calculator, I entered my preferred scale and the width of an A3 page, which gave me a width conversion of 2.47 centimeters. I then resized my hexagonal arc to that width. Then I did the same for the plant art in 1 6th scale. To create the wood strips, I made a square in shapes and recolored it to brown for wood. Click the padlock to unlock the aspect ratio and drag it over to the A3 mini poster. I didn't really measure things here, I just created a strip that was a bit longer than the width of the poster. Duplicate that square four times for four pieces of wood. Duplicate one of the wood panels and then shrink it down for the 1 12th poster size. and again duplicate it four times. Then for the magnet pieces, then I duplicated that piece four times. I've used 200 GSM white paper for the posters and we can see the draw feature first. Cricut cuts out a rectangle around the drawing. I then coloured the artwork by hand. I glued the magnet pieces to the wood and you can see them snap together magnetically just like the real thing. I also had some gold dots which I stuck on to make it look like metal studs. And I placed copper wire to hang them up. They look just like the real thing. I hope this has inspired you to decorate your dollhouse walls with some artwork. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, please subscribe.